All right, now I'm going to try to add a little bit of multimedia functionality. Originally, we started off with this index page that has a fixed positioned iframe here. This is a cover page. This is just an example without being decorated or anything. It just opens a page uh, initially called cover. And then when you move your scroll, because it's fixed, the iframe doesn't move, but the navigation on the left does. And you can either scroll by moving this, or you can come over here, and as long as you're highlighted over the navigation area, you could use your scroll wheel. So far, I'm only working on eggs. I've got a few multimedia things going on. Bacon. This is the bacon pa page. This is the toast page. This is the juice page. Originally, all of them only had images. But before I do different images for all these other three, I was trying to get some code uh, between images, audio snippets, and video snippets, get all the code working across multiple browsers in the eggs page. Once I get that straight, I could do a lot of copy and paste and then make um, original images and snippets that will go for bacon, toast, or juice and fit in those independent pages. So, oh, another thing I wanted to show you is that I put, uh, I made a little tiny icon so that up in the tab, not only do you see the title recipes, the title is, remember, in the head of the HTML document, but you also see a little icon. Okay, so let me get out of the index page and go just to the egg eggs page. The eggs. This is the index right here. You look up in the address bar. This that you're looking at right now, um, the path is my documents and settings, my ID for this computer that I'm on right here, the user ID is college, I'm on my desktop, and I'm in a folder called recipes, and this particular page you're looking at right now is called index.html, but I'm closing out of that because I don't want to focus on that. What I want to focus on are the eggs.html, which you see here, you see eggs.html, here eggs.html, and you can't, oh, eggs.html right there. These two don't give you the whole path. Firefox gives you the whole path if you don't give them a title, but these just give you the name of the file itself. This on the left-hand side is Chrome. In the center, we have Safari, and on the right, we have Firefox. So we're going to try to make our web page as consistent as possible across these three browsers and see if the functionality and appearance are as close to uh, similar as possible. I tried Opera and Internet Explorer and I had some problems with those two browsers getting stuck on running like they were looking for something they couldn't find and then they were totally stuck and I couldn't even move the scroll bar to take them to another part in the page like you can do with these three. So I'm only going to work with these three right now. Let me open up the code. Okay, here's the code to index. Let me first show you that little extra thing I put in the head to give us that little star that we had. It says link rel equals shortcut icon and href equals red star dot ico, ico type equals image forward slash x icon. This is how you type up an icon that will show up like this right here. You see this icon for Safari? That's the same deal when you run it. I'll launch this in Firefox. This is only the index page again. There's the icon right next to recipes. Okay, so I don't really want to look at index HTML anymore. I want to focus on the eggs, the eggs page. So let me get out of that. This code that I'm going to go over is the code that each of these browsers is following. We start off with the HTML beginning tag, and then we have our head. Inside the head, I've got a style. For the body, I have margin of zero pixels and padding of zero pixels. 
For the field set, I gave it border thick green solid, margin bottom 35 pixels, and a background color of gray. That shows you this square right here with the green outline, and it's pointed. I didn't give it a border radius. And the uh, margin bottom 35 pixels, the margin is the number of pixels between the bottom of the element before you get to the next element. Right now it's 35 pixels. If I change this to 50 pixels, the space between this field set and this one is going to increase. So let me save and then let me hit the refresh for each one of these browsers and you'll see that increase, that space. Now there's something strange going on with my Firefox here because every time I hit refresh one of these audio links goes off and I can hear my audio link, re uh, link read. These two, uh, Chrome and Safari, the, they don't function that way. I don't understand what's going on with the refresh of Firefox because I should not hear any of these go off until I click a link or click a button. That's the only time I should hear audio. Refresh should never open up audio. So Firefox has a bug in their browser code. Okay. Um, so I basically showed you how I changed the margin bottom of the field set to 50 pixels and it gave us more room between that field set and the next. Background color gray. Now let's look at the legends um, style. The legend style goes from here to here in those curly braces. Border thick green solid as well. Border radius 20 pixels. Since this uh, is rounded, this is letting you know that this is this is our legend. This is how we styled it. We gave it the rounded background color gray. Now, if if you remember me saying in another video, if you don't set the background color to elements, the background will be transparent. And I want to prove that to you by putting a Z in front of the word background color. Now that this is misspelled, the browser will not read this as a style. So then with no background color of gray for the legend, you're going to see how it's transparent and very difficult to read the text inside. That's going to bother me every single time. I, I just don't know how to keep that from running. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it in my headphones every time I hit refresh on all of these. So see, this being transparent is horrible. It's it's just ruining your ability to read the legend caption. So that's why it's important. You don't have to have it the same color as the field set. You could choose white as long as you choose some kind of background so that it's no longer transparent. Then it won't interfere with your text. Okay, then we've got a padding of 10 pixels, which gives us a nice little buffer between the text and the border of the legend. Then this, all this WebKit, WebKit box shadow, 2 pixels, 0 pixels, 30 pixels, 15 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.75, and then the next one, Moz box shadow, 2 pixels, 0 pixels, 30 pixels, 15 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0. 0.75, and then box shadow, 2 pixels, 0 pixels, 30 pixels, 15 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.75. All of those lines are giving us our little bit of shadow that goes all the way around our legend to give us the illusion of some type of shadow, some type of 3D effect. So that's the end of the uh, legend's um, style in the head. Now we have pound A, which means IDA. And all it's got is padding 0 pixels and margin 0 pixels. And I gave that um, style to this particular iframe right here. I didn't want to have extra margin space outside of the iframe and I didn't want extra padding inside so I gave it that zero and zero pixels for both of those but when I get to that part in the code you'll see where I have um, iframe ID it has an ID of A and a name of A. 
Okay, so that ends the style and that ends the head and now the body. Now in the in the head where we created the styles, we're styling all these di you know different things that are going to be in the body, but it's it's not until we actually get to the body tag where we create the elements that we wanted to style. So now that we have the body, we have a field set and a legend. And the caption of the legend is what's inside. It says, here's an image file with a one-line paragraph. Here's an image file with one-line paragraph. Here's an image file with one-line paragraph. Here's an image file with one-line paragraph. And there's the end of the legend. Here is the, the uh, code that lets you pull the image in right here. IMG for image, SRC for source, equals breakfast.jpg. The, the, that's the actual image file itself, the name of the image file. Alt equals eggs. That's an alternative in case something happens to this picture. If I go inside the folder recipes and inside chapter one and I find breakfast.jpg and rip it out, now it's no longer residing in recipes. So image source being breakfast JPEG, it's not going to find it. And because it's not going to find it, these pictures are not going to show. I'm going to hit refresh and we're going to see how each of these browsers handles when the image has disappeared from where it expects to see it. Okay, in Chrome you get this little icon here and the word eggs. In Safari you get this little question mark in the center with the word eggs. And in Firefox you get this thing that looks like a broken page image and the word eggs. So that's what alt does. If I put, if I change alt equals eggs to alt equals legs and hit refresh, uh, I mean hit save and then hit refresh in all of these. Now you have, although it's kind of hard to see because of the picture next to it, the word legs, legs, legs. So that is to let the if anything happens to your image for whatever reason, it lets your um, it lets your user know there was supposed to be a picture there, but something happened to it. The next thing I have is title equals eggs. All of these browsers do not respect the title uh, being a tooltip. If I try it out, just hover. Wait, something happened. Oh, I didn't put the picture back. I'm like, why isn't this working? I have to put the image back in here. And now that the image is in there, now when I hit refresh, the image will show again instead of alt eggs. Okay. When I hover over eggs, if Chrome respected the word title to give us a tool tip, then it would pop up right now, but it doesn't. So I'm going to try it in Safari. I'm going to go over the picture. And it's not giving me a tooltip either. Let me do it in Firefox. Firefox does actually have the tooltip working. I, I could have swore Safari did too earlier, but it's not working now. Well, so in any event, the title doesn't always work for all browsers to give you a tooltip. You can also style your image right inside the uh, image tag itself by using the keyword style equals and then whatever style you want to give it, put it in double quotes. So this particular image is given a style with a width of a 304 pixels and a height of 228 pixels. If I change those numbers, then these are going to stretch or reduce accordingly. And then after the image, we have a paragraph tag that says this is the eggs page. This is only a one line paragraph. You can really make a long paragraph, but I wasn't going to go into all that. I just used the p tags to show you this is where uh, a paragraph could go after an image. If you did want to have some kind of comments or story that went along with the image above it. That ends that field set. Okay, so we are done with this field set. So that means I can go down here and pass this picture up and go to the next field set and read the code that applies to the next field set. All right. Each of these field sets have an iframe at the bottom. 
this one has already populated a um, a controller for an audio player. These are list items. It's uh, an unordered list. If it was an ordered list, we'd have numbers. But since it's an unordered list, we have these dots. And when you, inside of the list item, there is a link. And when I click the link, whatever this links to is going to open up in here. So let's find the code that applies to that. Here's the beginning of that field set. Here's the beginning of that legend. And here is the caption of that legend. Here are three links to an iframe for different audio snippets. And you read inside each of these legends. And of course, it's going to say the same thing. Um, here's the unordered list tag. If I change the U to an O, that's going to make it now an ordered list. Well, I have to do the same thing to the closing unordered list, change it to an ordered list save that and now refresh each of the pages and instead of a bullet we're going to have a number. So there you go, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I can just leave that, I don't need to rechange that. Um, Going back to the list itself, ordered list, we just changed it from an unordered to an ordered. Here's the list item, the first list item. A ref equals eggs1.mp3. That's going to pick up this mp3 file that I have in the chapter 1 folder. You see I have a bacon HTML, an eggs HTML, an eggs video HTML, which I haven't got to yet, a juice HTML, and a toast HTML. What we're looking at right now is this eggs HTML, and we're just looking at it in three different browsers. I have a breakfast JPEG and a juice JPEG. Those are image files. The sound files I have are eggs.mp3, eggs1.mp3, eggs2.mp3, eggs3.mp3. I have no sound files for the bacon, juice, or toast yet. I have movie clips, which all they are is a very quick uh, video of me looking at the image and just moving my mouse around just to prove that it's a movie and not a flat, straight image. Uh, I've also taken those AVI files and converted them with a VLC media player to an MP4. Um, and then I also tried to use the HTML5 code to use an MP4 and an AUG to play the audio. But for whatever reasons, uh, the configuration of the files or or the conversion of the files, it did not open properly. So now I'm trying to use an embedded player um to to make the the audio file work well i've tried a variety of players and haven't had any success as far as the video goes and i'm still sketchy with how i want to do the audio as well but anyhow i was just showing you all the different files that are in here um if i click on if I click on this first link, eggs one audio, it immediately opens up in this iframe. If I click the second one, I got the second audio. Okay, so Chrome played all three of these links in the iframe. The quality is not that good. It sounds choppy. Now I'm going to try it in Safari. Okay, Safari has perfect quality. It's not choppy at all. It's not jumpy at all. It's not staticky at all. That worked well. Now let's try um, Mozilla Firefox. Okay, I would say that this is choppy in the uh, similarly to uh, Chrome's choppiness. Um, I I think it's probably got the worst audio quality of all three, and then I would I would say Firefox is the worst. Then I would say that Chrome is still bad but better, and I would say that Safari's audio quality is supreme. It's it's perfect audio, audio quality. I would say that I like the way that Firefox 
puts its uh, audio control. It butts at the bottom of the iframe. It fits nicely. It's not hovering too high. Um, when I made this iframe smaller, I kind of assumed that all three of the controllers would fit and I wouldn't have to make the iframe this, this, this high. But what was happening was these uh, controllers want to float higher than the size of my iframe was, so it was cutting half of the controller off. So in order for me to incorporate uh, the entire controller inside the iframe, I had to give the, uh, the um, style of this iframe a, a, a greater height. And I personally think that that's uh, a pain. I don't like it like that. So that's another thing uh, that I got to figure out how to fix so that I can have them all narrow and there shouldn't ha they shouldn't have to be in a huge uh, iframe like this. Basically, that's why I put that um, style. Where did it go in the head? Padding zero and margin zero. I thought that that would take this padding out of the iframe and kind of suck this player down to the bottom more but that didn't actually happen because you see the padding in the margin zero but this is still floating with some kind of padding underneath it which is not uh, not making these look the same across different browsers okay back to where I was there was the one link uh, and I showed you the mp3 file. The target is A because this iframe has the name of uh, ID A. Title, click here to he uh, hear an eggs audio snippet. Um, when you hover over this, you get the tooltip. Firefox does give you the tooltip. When you hover over it in Safari, you do not get the tooltip. And when you hover over it in uh, Chrome, you do not get the tooltip. Um... And then there's the text that you actually use to click, eggs one audio. You click each one of those in order to make it work. There's the ending link tag and the ending li, li tag. And the exact same thing happens to the second list item and the third list item. And then there's the end of the ordered list. And then there's the iframe that I was referring to that I didn't like having to give it an extra height just to see the players for the audio. Uh, for iframe, ID equals A, that let me give it a style of zero pixels padding and zero pixels margin. The name equals A allows us to take the uh, link and target where the link goes to and source equal to nothing in double quotes was so that when you first open this page there's supposed to be nothing in any of the iframes at all. Scrolling equals auto, frame border equals one pixel, height equals 60, and width equals 100%. Okay, that's the end of the iframe and the end of the field set. So you know what that means, the end of the field set here, I can move on to the next field set, and we can discuss the code for that one in each of these browsers. See how each of these browsers represent the same code. Here's the field set and the legend and the really long caption to the legend. Here are three buttons that have their very own script, which opens or pauses one audio snippet. No iframe needed, but you also will not get any controls for the audio. So here is the audio, um, the, the audio tag. Okay, the first one is audio. ID equals my audio one, and here's a source tag right here from there to there, and it says so, uh, source src equals eggs1.mp3 type equals audio forward slash mp4. Now, if your browser does not uh, use the HTML5 audio element, then you'll get, uh, instead of getting this to work, you'll get this error message that tells you exactly what it just said and and you put that possible error message inside the audio tag uh, this was the beginning audio tag and this is the end of it I want to think that um, 
Internet Explorer gave me this error message. It was either Fire, uh, it was either Opera or Internet Explorer because I had a problem with both of those uh, for different reasons, and I cut them out of this video because it it kept freezing up the screen, and I just took them off so I wouldn't have to deal with it right now. Um, okay, so there's the audio that's going to actually play the eggs1.mp3 all that code you need then there's a button button type equals button and here's an on click event for the button uh, it says equals odd underscore play underscore pause one and then there's the uh, empty parentheses for a method and then here's the end button tag so from here to here is the beginning button and from here to here is the end button and then the text inside actually shows on the button itself the play pause one okay so there's the first button next we have an audio tag that is going to and an and a button second button that is going to be uh, given the ID of audio 2 the source is going to be eggs2.mp3. It's going to have the same type, audio4 slash mp4, and the same error message, just in case the browser doesn't deal with the HTML5 audio element. There's That's the same. The button, type button on click, is going to say odd play pause 2. And then you're going to have the face of the button saying play pause 2. So each of these buttons is is going to have a, a different name to it. It's going to have a different audio ID that matches a different audio link. So this third one is audio ID equals my audio 3. Source, source equals eggs3.mp3. Type is the same, audio forward slash mp4. And the uh, error message is the same. Your user agent does not support the HTML5 audio element. And there's the closing audio tag. And there's the third button, button type equals button. On click equals odd play pause 3. And the play pause 3 is the text on the third button. Now, we have created three audio tags that apply to three mp3 files. We have created three buttons that uh, have three click events that are named differently. Now you're going to have three scripts. This first script tag, you have an opening script tag and an ending script tag. Function odd play pause one. Var my audio one equals document dot get element by ID my audio one and here's an if else statement if my audio one dot paused if that's true then do what's in here my audio one dot play so if the if the first audio is paused then play it <coughs> otherwise if it's not paused and it's playing then my audio dot one dot pause what that is going to allow us to do is to toggle between playing it or pausing it. If you hit it once, it's going to play, start to play the clip, the audio clip or snippet. And if you hit it again, it's going to cut it off right in the middle of its audio snip and it's going to pause it. And then if you uh, hit it again, it's going to play it again. So it's basically this if else is a toggle mechanism. It's a function that allows us to toggle between playing an audio or pausing it and that's the end of the, that script and we're gonna make we're gonna copy and paste this script three times and the only thing we're gonna change is the name of the function instead of odd play pause one it's gonna be odd play pause two then we're gonna change the um, variable that we create we're gonna have my odd one for this one but we're gonna create it as my odd two for the second one and of course, when you refer to it in the parentheses, you have to have the right name also. So all these my audio ones in here are going to be changed to my audio twos in the next script. And, and I'll show you that right now. Function odd play pause two. Var my audio two equals document dot get element by ID my audio two. If my audio two dot paused, 
then my audio 2.play, else my audio 2.pause. Again, that is a toggle. And here's the third function. Same thing, we're just changing a couple of the names. Function odd play pause 3. Var my audio 3 equals document dot get element by ID my audio 3 in parentheses and double quotes. If my audio 3 dot paused, then my audio 3 dot play. Else my audio 3 dot pause. And that ends that script and that ends that field set. Okay, so let's give it a go. I read all of the code for this field set, so let's try it. This is Chrome. The play and the pause work. The play and the pause works. The play and the pause works. We have the same staticky playback that Chrome had up here. So it's basically that file type, how this browser plays it back. It plays it staticky. I'm not really sure what the, per what the reason behind that is. Now let's try it in Safari. Okay, all three of them played, and same thing as uh, up here, the audio playback was smooth as silk. So the functionality was wonderful and the playback was wonderful. So I have to give Safari five stars for how it's working so far. Now let's try it in uh, Firefox. Okay, the button functionality worked consistently among all three and Firefox also, just like up here, had the crappiest audio playback of all, but the functionality was the same. Whereas when we were using, when we were using the links that opened up the uh, audio this way, you see how all three of these are different. It's not consistent across the browsers. They're different. This hovers higher in the iframe. This sits nice in the bottom. These look like this doesn't look too bad, but if you ask me, this looks like crap, and this looks very nice. This presentation is the nicest of all three, but this playback is the worst of all three. This presentation is kind of nice because it has the 3D look. Uh, I don't like how it hovers way up here, but it has wonderful playback. So when you take your web code and you test it out in different browsers, you are going to see fine differences and some differences are not fine. They're very, uh, very huge differences. So what you want to do is find a happy medium by finding cr controls or functionality that give you the most consistency across the browsers. I really like the function of all three of these looking the same, but I don't like the playback. I don't like the quality, how the quality differs. I haven't achieved any video code to test across the browsers yet. That'll be in my next video. And as far as the um, the code goes for the last field set that I'm not that I don't have code for yet. What I do have is the field set legend. All it says in there is video. That's all it says in there. The frame, I gave it a different a, a different iframe because when you have multiple iframes in the same page like you do here, you got you got uh, this iframe here and this iframe here, you have two iframes. You have to give them unique ID uh, if you want to give it a different style and you absolutely have to give it, if you want to give it the same style, that's fine as long as it's going to fit your purpose, height and width and, what, and padding and everything else, but your name definitely has to be unique because when you click a link or something that's supposed to open in a, a, a name of an iframe, you don't want to use the same one. You want it to you want it to be unique so that it opens in this iframe because if you put the same name as this iframe, then when you go to watch the video, it's going to try to open up up here. So you have to have its own name. So this name is frame 9, just to be totally different, ID 9. Uh, the source, the source I, I attempted to make an eggsvideo.html. I attempted to put an embedded uh, video player inside 
another page and then just open this page in here but I was I was not successful at this point it's something that I have to work on the height I gave 400 pixels for each for this particular uh, video iframe the width I gave it a hundred percent and that's all that I did with that iframe and that's the end of the body and the end of the HTML so I have a quite a bit to work on to perfect this and make it browser compatible and uh, make it to where I like the output.